Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Wasike. We're speaking about development of grassroots football in the wake of you know off-season competitions that happened during Christmas festivity and even the ongoing one in Kotbiro football tournament, which I'm reliably informed it's the quarterfinal stage. And of course, slated for this particular afternoon is Dallas All-Stars against Kajiado All-Stars. Uh, of course, that game coming your way in a few minutes now from... Now, as we speak, Rorak Allstars up against Leeds United, Gidura United will be playing against Terra Squad, then Asek Huruma will be locking horns against Biafra Kamaliza. Wow, what a name, Biafra Kamaliza. Hopefully they win the overall championship. Joining us, Simon Sepe Mulama, former international, former FC Leopards midfielder. He played for Madara United as well. Overseas, he played for Ismaili, the Egyptian Giants, but nowadays... No longer in the public domain. Good to see you, Sepe Bana. And you, and you forgotten also Vasteros, IK, Sweden. Yes, go ahead. And you guys are shaking me. It's coronavirus. You know, we walk by, by, by faith. Yeah, yes. yeah, by faith. So, but so, I, it's, I've been all right. Yes. I've been watching you for quite some time, uh, and I'm glad you guys, uh, Y254 is growing. As a, from the first day I was here, to you know, a lot of differences. Great guests you have. Uh, Nyambura has been here, been listening to her. Mm -hmm. Great show, always growing. As a, where you guys are, I know positive things always happen. Yeah. Definitely, good compliments coming. Of course, we. We 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 very humble to listen to that, isn't it, Osoro? <laughs> very much, very much. So, Sepe, we we were speaking when the show was just starting about grassroots football tournaments, and oh. you know, I don't know what has been the secret, man. And I think that has been the reason as to why corporates are getting impressed and pumping their resources as we speak. Uh -huh. There is a new betting site in Betmoto, uh -huh. which has given Kotbiro tournament organizers Kenya shillings two million because uh -huh. the competition had stalled. Due to Sport Pesa exit, you remember that uh -huh. tussle uh -huh. uh, between Sport Pesa and government over taxation. Uh -huh. And now it's up in arms, it continues uh -huh. uh, to happen. What has been the secret to these uh, grassroots football competitions? Uh, first of all, you mentioned uh, Biafra Kamaliza, and it reminded me a, a, a team long time ago that were also participating in grassroots grass root football, Motela Kamaliza. And wow. that is where we had players like Maurice Sunguti coming from, mm -hmm. uh, from Botella, uh, Gripa Nyanje, uh, in the neighborhoods. But I think the secret is, uh, uh, in the community, we have a lot of talent. Uh, we have young guys and young adults that engage in football as a form of uh, entertainment or a hobby, or sometimes they just want to play uh, and, um, and try their luck and see if they'll get a chance to participate in other bigger leagues. So the number of players that are talented and have the ability that are in the community that have not yet sprung up and be seen at the top level or at the bigger stages, the numbers are huge. So while, while we have the top leagues going on, uh, when an opportunity is presented for this community or this off-season tournaments to go, uh, to be played, then you, you see teams will always be there, players will always be there, so these tournaments will always be here with us. I think that has been the secret. The number of players uh, at the base, a uh, huge number of players that haven't already got an opportunity to participate at the top, they are present, they are always ready and willing to participate in such, uh, in such platforms. Yeah. Osoro, there has been this fear of several corporates coming on board to sponsor sporting initiatives due to accountability. We've seen several reasons cited as to why uh, most companies are scared of sponsoring uh, sporting initiatives for fear that, you know, their money will not be well utilized. Do you think uh, they should uh, not continue looking back and keep on investing their resources into sports? Yeah, they should do that because uh, at the end of the day for corporates, for them what they want is visibility for their products. And I think uh, grassroots football, more so this uh, festive period, has shown that uh, they have got numbers. And for a corporate, for them, as what they want for their product is visibility. And when they give their money, they, are, they know that our product has been seen outside there. I know you are a, a, 
<laughs> you already smiling yet I'm asking a question <laughs> you seem to know to say, I tend no, to ask no, no. As, a, as, a, as a graduate of an mm. overseas university you've been mm-hmm. working in partnership with local agencies to ensure that mm. you know those players who exhibit exceptional potential can mm. get an opportunity to study mm. overseas mm. how has it been like even in your pursuit of ensuring that those kids that uh, get such chances are those from you know the local level in machinani where uh, there is plenty of untapped potential mm, mm. well it's not easy but with uh, with resources then it becomes a little bit easier you can travel a lot you can move a little bit more and um, uh, with more fluidity in terms of uh, logistics um, but when you are provided with such platforms then you you have a huge pool to choose from you know you don't have to choose um the best out of the worst players you know you have to choose the best out of the best players because you have a huge number of players uh, that meet certain criteria criteria in terms of ability and, and education and all that so yes such uh, such platforms are good and i think they also present the opportunity for the kids not only to pursue football as a career but they can also pursue academics and 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 pursue other other other, other careers in life Osoro, Kot Biro tournament is a competition you and I have attended their finals at Ziwani grounds at some points getting problems with FKF over you know uh, it is sanctioning on mm-hmm. whether it should continue taking place and of course towards the end of last year I think there were protests with some team Kingston FC mm-hmm. invading the pitch to protest over the unpaid <coughs> uh, prize money because Port Pesa were the main sponsor and uh, what happened to them, they had to pull out now Betmoto, a new gaming site on board. I don't know. What, what, what do you make of, you know, Kodbiro tournament as a football competition, as a tournament mm. which has been played in the Far East Lands area where it's believed to be the cradle land of soccer? I think with the, everybody who is organizing a football tournament, they need to understand that you have to be sanctioned by the federation. So at the end of the day, if it's a uh, Biro, uh, it is any Glovers Malala Cup, it's the Baraza Foundation, all those tournaments have got to be sanctioned by the federation. So it can be easier for you to run your your tournament. So because when you are not sanctioned by the federation or you have problems with the federation, then you come to realize that your tournament will not be given so much. It will not be even be sanctioned. I think you remember what happened to the extreme super eight when uh, they had their problems with the federation so anybody who is organizing any tournament for it to have smooth sailing for the tournament just have that letter from the federation giving you a go ahead to have your tournament but i think also the the um, the challenge with this this uh, particular question you asked about court bureau and and other teams invading the ground yeah. uh, was not really about not being sanctioned by the federation but yeah. s- uh, amounts were not paid to the previous winners and uh-huh. now this yes. tournament was almost getting close to their quarterfinals and the tournament is going on mm-hmm. but previous winners have not been paid so people <laughs> yes. get on the field and say unless yes. we get uh, because I remember Asek had a match on that day, Asek mm-hmm. Ruma, yes. and that's who, that's my neighbor who do have yes. grown. So <laughs> it's a team I follow very closely. Yes. And and this team says, you know, this match is not going on bef- because after this is the semi-finals. Yes. And then the finals, and then our monies will be forgotten. So you guys have to pay us for the previous se- uh, the competition yes. <laughs> before this can be played, and you guys go ahead and do it. So the intention of the pitch was... Was, was, was positive in these guys to the <laughs> organizers of the tournament. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yes. and I think it was a wake-up call for them. You know, I, I think they needed ju- that uh, kind of jacking so that they can go ahead uh, and go out of their way and look for sponsorships. It's a good thing that they got a, a partner or a sponsor in Betmoto uh, to come in and re- to come in and rescue them at least because yeah. uh, p- making payment from your pocket sometimes it becomes too much. You know, we've seen chairmen of clubs, uh, AFC Leopards, Chahonyo, the Sambus, and everyone. If you keep paying from your personal pocket it becomes a big burden because you also have a family and other in, uh, stuff you have to do but then if it's a corporate that supports that and they do this as a CSR exercise or something then it becomes easy for you to flow and move the tournament so um, because of that the invasion of the grounds and the you know rebellion from some of the clubs I think it motivated the organizers to go ahead and, 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 and look out for sponsorship and, and you know I think it's a good thing but Moto came in rescued them I hope they got some amount to try and settle that previous debt that was there and so and help them uh, go ahead and finish the tournament.
Also, it looks like it is very difficult to run a grassroots initiative because having spoken to the organizers of those tournaments which took place during off-season off period, with some saying that they won't pay prize money, they will just facilitate playing kids, balls, and pay referees. It looks like, you know, it is difficult because <laughs> at, some, at some point, our good friend Paul Polosa, who is the tournament coordinator, uh, saying that he has, he has withdrawn because of, you know, the difficulties he encountered. Pressure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I've seen, you know, he was handed some playing kits, balls, jerseys, mm -hmm. and even referees money. I don't know. How, how, how tricky? I, I, it, it, it is the motivation behind the tournament, mm. which is the key. It is the motivation behind the tournament. So you'll find we have got grassroots tournaments going on, being funded by politicians. That they have got money mm -hmm. and the motivation behind that is my name is out there for my people in my constituency at the and end of the or day i will be elected <laughs> in 2022, in 2022 mm -hmm. people will be talking about me mm -hmm. and then you look at a, a tournament now like Kotbiro, which the motivation is not the politician it's mm -hmm. about the tournament that has been there for a very long time mm -hmm. that is there to nurture some of these young talents and all that so the likes of paul polosa the likes of roba they don't have that much money to run the tournament. If they had deep pockets, it's easier for them to run that tournament. Away from the money and everything, the people running the tournament, are they trained for that? Do they have the necessary expertise to go ahead and run this tournament smoothly? Because you'll, you'll come to find that even if it's not the grassroots football mm -hmm. and you are running any tournament, the pressure of handling that tournament, even if it's a seven-day tournament, even if it's a three-day tournament, it's a one-day tournament, the, there is a lot of work for you to, to, you have to put in for that tournament to be successful. I think you've brought in some, some, some interesting uh, concern with regards to the people behind the running and management of the tournament. We've had, you know, Ngarwa Kamuya is the... Uh, sports lawyer here time and again and he's insisted on the essence of these sporting associations having not necessarily a former player mm. but someone with the mindset of a sporting manager yes. and, and, and we've seen people like Charles Cardovillis now in charge of you know Betmoto as mm. the marketing manager he's, 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 he's dealt with rugby he's been a coach I think and a player as well Yes. do you think the association of sports him having been in rugby but now dealing with football do you think that gears uh, uh, towards the realization of the success and goals of these initiatives like even kodbiro yeah because I think when we had that conversation remember we were talking about uh, when we look at the america sports system the people who are working in the sports industry who are graduates mm -hmm. from big universities, Yale, Stanford, Oxford, and all that. These are a sports machinery who necessarily do not care about the field of play, mm -hmm. have no anything to do with the field of play or sports. For them, it is the machinery behind the sports unit in that the marketing department, the project managers, for them, they come, they're employed to do that job, and that's why it is very efficient. Now, for us here, you'll find that just because Sepe was a former player, doesn't have the expertise to run a tournament, he'll be named the tournament director. Now the pressure that comes with that, of running that tournament is, you don't have the expertise to run that tournament. And now you'll start having hurdles all your way in that tournament. So at the end of the day, you need to look for the necessary expertise to run your tournament. And not necessarily in the in, in the universities, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and in the big offices with yeah. uh, uh, suit and ties. Yes. Because, um, uh, you know, when we mention guys like Polosa and Robo mm -hmm. from, uh, and the former, um, uh, the late, um, um, what's his name? Mm -hmm. Anyway, when you, when you start calling out such names, you, f you, you realize that they have been in the industry for quite some time. Yes, yes. yes. And, and these are skills that can be acquired. And they so, resonate well and with, they the resonate region. With, with, with the region and the community that they are serving, and, you know, and the, the community that they also reside in. So over time, they acquire these skills, they acquire the expertise that we are talking about. And so uh, however much you could have gone to a, a, a project management class, yes. 
Uh, but then when you come to the ground mm -hmm. uh, in Huruma, and, and somebody doesn't want to, to, you know, the referee pulls out a red card, and the player and the fans get on the field because they know this is a critical player for our team. We do not want him to go out. Then whatever you learned in class, it's not going to be applicable on the yes. field. But then the respect that you have gained over time mm -hmm. because you've been around for quite some time, people know you and you have, you know, you, uh, they trust and they respect you in that sense. You can just stand on that field and say, guys, hey, respect what the referee has said. It's all about building the game. Let the guy go out. Let the game continue. And that will happen. And of course, you can continue talking to us. Uh, hashtag touchline Y254 at Y254 channel at Wasike Maxwell at Osoro Bats. And of course, some uh, feedback coming in through Edward Okoth. Of course, he's, a, he's an aspiring politician, but he says that I'm reading from the same script. I agree with Osoro. Local tournament organizers should focus on development of talents of the young people rather than gaining political mileage. Most of the players end up feeling misused with no meaningful reward. Mm. You see, for someone like him who is looking forward to getting elected in a political capacity, mm -hmm. he says mm -hmm. that, you know, in as much as we put up these tournaments, there should be, you know, a, a end, goal, yes. an mm -hmm. ultimate mm -hmm. uh, prize. Not necessarily someone wants to use it as a stepping stone to election. Yeah, and, 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 and the, that's where the challenge comes to, for, uh, also goes to the organizers, you know, yes. uh, and say, this is our vision, this is our mission. This is why we're setting up a tournament. Is it for financial gain? So that number one gets one million, number two gets 750,000, number three, 500,000. We go to the media, we make a lot of noise then about that it. Then that is the end of you it. Know, and then that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. Or are we providing a platform where we will have kids and we will identify, uh, we'll recognize that they are putting an effort in participating, we'll put up, we'll give them a certificate, but also make this a continuous prog uh, process that maybe after four months we will have another tournament of the same, maybe it's a U17 mm -hmm. or U21. And after um, another six months, we will do the same while we are bringing in coaches and maybe agents and stuff like that, and people who can try and identify the talent and find a way of nurturing it and developing it and moving it to the next level. Now, if we have a tournament where you all we want is number one to get one million and the office gets uh, administration cost money, maybe 500,000, and after one month it's over, you know, that's when we have a lot of egos being bruised, and then we have a problem. But yes. when everyone is reading from whoever is sponsoring it, be it an MP, be it a, 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 a corporate a, a firm that is known, uh, whoever it is, whoever is sponsoring it should read on the same script with the organizers and also the clubs that are participating. You call the number of clubs participating, you call their management, you call the coaches and say, guys, this is... Uh, for it's a long haul uh, project. It's for longevity, not just for today, but we're looking 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. So don't really look at how many millions you'll get from this tournament, but look at the platform that we're giving you guys, especially for the players. And that is a, quite an interesting, yeah. uh, you know, remark. I know, Sepe, you followed, closely followed what happened in Western, especially yes. in Kakamega County, yes. with regards to Cleo Fas Malala's tournament finals, alongside Fernandez Baraza mm -hmm. tournament finals, amongst other competitions mm. that took place, even a quarter memorial cup. Mm. But these two caught the attention of mm. a lot of Kenyans with regards mm. to how people scrambled for... Mm you know, Goodies. mileage and mm, mm. attention yes. and even, you know, quite, 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 quite a crowd, mm. we can say, yes. in terms of those fans who attended. Mm. But what's, what's the end term goal? Yes, I mean, when, when, when you hear, uh, and I'm not talking about any specific tournament, uh, any one of those that you've mentioned, <laughs> but you know... For fear of victimization. <laughs> <laughs> Been in this industry long enough, man. You <laughs> taken out of context for, know, right? for no reason. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, uh, Maxwell, yes. you tell me I'm a corporate. Uh, we've read about the um, uh, the hat trick project by UEFA. Yes, yes. And the success that they had 13 years later, mm -hmm. having started to build mini to build mini pitches and and, and restructure them and manage them, uh, mini pitches all around Europe, mm -hmm. and for 13 years. The 13th year when the World Cup was being played, the last six teams were from Europe. The last two teams were from Europe and the World Cup remained in Europe. Europe. Something that they were proud of. And they say it is because of a project that they made sure there they are mini pitches, not stadiums, mm -hmm. 
mini pitches so yeah. where in your neighborhood jericho pale inje yes, your kid can go out and play on a nice surface and uh, nicely fenced and then the coaches around that region they are coached and uh, capacity is built mm -hmm. okay so if if i go out there and i build mini pitches even when i leave office everybody will remember what i did for development of football your impact will be okay. long term yes because 50 years later there are kids that will be playing on a good surface the community coaches have been trained well to work with kids and develop their talent our the national teams and the clubs in the country will be getting good products not a player that cannot control the ball because this player has been brought up the right way played on a right surface exposed to good tournaments exposed to uh, exposed to good training so, so then when we do such stuff and say we want to develop the game Personally, Asepe, someone who has played before and has visited different areas that have been successful in football, tick. Yeah. So. <laughs> one lesson for me, which I, I took from uh, grassroots football, was Kenyans are hungry for live football at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a big lesson I took from the grassroots football. You go right now to Kotbiro, you'll find many people mm. there. You go to a Kenyan Premier League match that is happening today at Kasarane Stadium, there are no fans. Are, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is a big wake up call. Just a game at home in Kakamega at the Mumias Complex, mm -hmm. big home ground game with home ground people is attracting people from home. The home area people are coming to the field mm -hmm. to watch that. At Kotbiro, people are coming to watch that match and people are not going to watch. Uh, Kenya Premier League match. So that was a big lesson that we have to pick from grassroots football. Why is it that the people from around that area are going to watch their own people? At some point, I think the same ground, Ziwani, yeah. in 2017, the finals were taking place for Kodbiro tournament. Mm -hmm. And I think even accreditation for members of the press <laughs> had to happen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's how big it has gotten. That's how big it is, yes, yeah. uh, and, and you know, small yeah. little things, incentives yes. for the yes. for the for the community yes. around that stadium. You know, mm -hmm. so we have to buy. You have to pay twenty shillings or thirty, mm -hmm. depending on the level of the competition. So if yes. it's a final, maybe you'll pay a fifty bob for, for for a seat for, for chair, yeah. and you know, so for and, chair, and the seats are all over the place. So, yes. so, so mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of benefit when you get involve yourself with grassroots football and development yeah. uh, uh, for for the for whoever it is for a partner that wants to partner with the community and, and, and engage in development of the sport at the grassroots level, but also the community benefits uh, a lot from, when, uh, from uh, having a structured way or tournaments that you know, can bring up their talents, you know, but also can showcase what they have around. There's a kiosk just next to that stadium. I know it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and almost everybody has to pass through that place at least to make sure your name is mentioned that wasike was here one time okay <laughs> even if it means next time you'll eat at a cafe in town but yeah. when you talk about kotbiro you cannot speak about talk about kotbiro without mentioning kwanyaga yeah. next to kotbiro <laughs> unapata mandondo na chapati Yes. Uh, not necessarily chips and burger, yeah. but you know it, that it's the tradition. It is, you know, it is the flavor that comes with these tournaments. So even the community around benefits from such tournaments. But when they are well organized, well funded, supported well, and it's a good thing that we are seeing such a, a betting company, a company coming through for for um, uh, Kotbiro tournament that we, was at risk uh, of you know just uh, folding up. And quite something when it comes to organization of the same. Even prior to 2017 polls, there were a lot of politicians crowded on the dais, and most of them were scrambling for attention, just 30 seconds speaking. And I think the organizers said, no, come on, this is not a, a politically related tournament. We shall keep it to matters football and giving it back to the community. And I think that has always been the norm. I think, can we say that that has been the secret as to why it's longevity mm. uh, has been witnessed to date. I, I think it's because uh, the culturally and they have put it as a local home community tournament. Mm. Yeah, it's not a political tournament that people are coming to talk before the final. You have to give a You realize even most of uh, senior players going even to those tournaments. Mm. Yeah, they are playing in those tournaments. Mm. But it's all about 
that young kid from that community? Mm. Can he get a chance to show his talent and can someone spot him, take him to another place? Mm -hmm. yeah. So overall, uh, Sepe, what is uh, the secret? What should, you know, the organizers of, uh, you know, these football competitions do to ensure that they attract corporate uh, there's, there seem to be lack of corporate confidence mm. when it comes to supporting sporting activities because mm. of fear of embezzlement of resources oh, allocated yeah, yeah, yeah. to... Try, try to be as transparent as possible yes. uh, in, uh, in the process of uh, organizing uh, your tournaments and attracting the corporates. Eh? Try to be as, as transparent uh, as possible with the resources that you get. You know, uh, b build a good portfolio that any, when, when anyone refers to a previous partner, uh, it's only positive feedback that they get. Uh, that is it, you know, and also the content of, of the competition. Sometimes, you know, um, uh, let's have teams uh, that have been coached well and they have good discipline because there's also a reputation that yes. comes with the tournaments, you know. Yes. So when they, we have good the reputation, wants good publicity. Yeah, good publicity. So we have good reputation, then uh, you have a chance of attracting people. I mean, Roya, Wanyama Roya is, yes. is like two or three years old. But you know, you see then the kind of uh, support on, and part, or partners that come on board. Kothbiro has been there for the longest time. Mohamud Abbas played Kothbiro yes. when he was the playing in, yes, in the 80s. In the 80s. And, and you know, we're talking about a tournament that is less than three years old, but already attracting more partnerships, more sponsorships than Kothbiro. Even Safari, I think, uh, yeah. on board. Uh, you understand. Uh, so uh, the reputation is also uh, uh, critical. So work on not just registering clubs and having as many clubs as possible, but also let's have training for the fans and the players and the coaches. So when a coach is on the touchline, this is what we expect of you. No, could you do for free? Yes. So when you're, in, when you're participating in Kothbiro tournament, this is the kind of behavior we expect. If you're a player, this is what we expect. The fans, this is what we expect. You know, and, and, and trust me, man, even with among those fans, you get someone who can help you in a small way to fund your project. Yes, definitely. Of course, we've been speaking about the development of grassroots football with focus on Kothbiro, the ongoing competition, one of the oldest, actually the oldest football competition uh, in Kenya, notably in Nairobi with the competition entering quarterfinal stages, four matches lined up this particular afternoon. We shall be keeping tabs uh, and see how it pans out. Of course, the organizers uh, now look relieved because they have a new gaming site in Betmoto who's come to their rescue, considering that Sport Pesa left after that tussle with government over taxation. The tournament had stalled, and there were protests from teams that participated during last season over unpaid allowances. And as Sepe put it, now there is uh, some order. And of course, to those teams taking part, discipline is key. And that's why, you know, corporates have to come on board. Your parting shot, gentlemen, also, Robert, you are. Final words, I know you've been, <laughs> you've been uh, on administration radar uh. with regards to borrowing a leaf from these uh, grassroots competitions in terms of packaging their product to attract more crowds. Are you still emphasizing on the same? I'll just say we enjoy the FA Cup tonight. <laughs> 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 and live on Channel 1, right? Live on United Channel 1. United against Watford, 11pm yeah, yeah, yeah. on Channel 1. And I think the ongoing tie, Everton against Rotherham, also yes. live right now. Yourself, Sepe? Uh, thanks for hosting me, my friend. And, uh, you know, the corporates and any, any, any other good uh, well-wishers that are out there, don't shy off from coming to support the grassroots football and grassroots development because that's where the future of this country is. And you always sit every evening uh, alongside in the neighborhood of Uruma catching up the young people showcasing their talents. Oh, yeah. Quite an interesting. Everywhere in Eastlands you'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> Quite something. Of course, that has been the touchline on Y254. We say goodbye and continue keeping safe. God bless you and Happy New Year to you folks. See you next time. Same place.